The 3D printer manufacturer Mingda gave me a D2 for making a review video and I will take this opportunity to have a look back at my personal 3D printing history. My first contact with 3D printing technology took place almost 4 years ago and the kit printer I tested at the time is now used to demonstrate how desktop printers have evolved over time. Even laypersons can see that I'm comparing apples and oranges somehow, but both printers are mass-produced devices of their era. While 4 years ago several hours passed by from unpacking the kit until the first print could be started... ...this time duration shrinks to significantly less than 1 hour with the Mingda D2. This is because the D2 ships more or less completely assembled. The assembly starts with screwing together socket and top frame... ...to which reinforcements are then attached. Now, the print head... ...and the cover on the motor of the X-axis... ...as well as the filament holder have to be screwed on. The final step is to plug in the cables. With that, the assembly of the printer is done. The electronics of the kit printer is attached to the frame without any cover. I really like openness, but that's a bit too much of it with regards to the isolation of the mains voltage at the power supply. With the Mingda D2 everything is safely housed in the socket of the device. The wiring inside looks really tidy and no moving parts can touch the cables with the mains voltage. Adjusting the mechanics is the same for both printers. First, both ends of the X-axis are adjusted to the same height over the print bed, which is done by manually turning the spindles of the Z-axis until the aluminum bar touches the spacer tool. Then the print bed is brought to low position at all four corners. After switching the printer on, the Z-axis is homed... ...the print head is then moved to the corner points by hand... ...and the build plate is gradually lifted by adjusting the screws... Until in the final run, nothing but a sheet of paper fits tightly between print bed and nozzle. The procedure itself has remained the same, but adjusting the build plate is much more convenient with the large wheels on the print bed or the Mingda. Both devices have a heated print bed, but due to the thermal insulation and the higher input power, the maximum temperature of the Mingda is significantly higher than that of the kit printer. 40 degrees Celsius are reached after about 2 minutes... ...60 degrees Celsius after 3 minutes... ...90 degrees after 5 minutes... And finally 100 degrees Celsius after about 6 minutes, which is more or less the maximum temperature, whereby the ambition temperature in my video studio is 15 degrees Celsius. 4 years ago, printing was done on masking tape, a common method to achieve a reasonable adhesion of the first layer on the print bed. The latest technology used in desktop printing is a plastic coated metal plate that sticks magnetically to the print bed. The big advantage is that even objects with a large base area can be easily removed from the build plate after printing. I usually ruin the plastic coatings on several of my printers more sooner than later, especially when using a scrapper to remove the prints from the build plate. There is no need for this tool with the D2. Glass plates that are held on the print bed with metal clips are still a common solution. An upgrade that is easy to implement and so made its way to my old kit printer. The axes on the kit printer are guided by linear ball bearings along 8mm round rods. This construction is significantly weaker... 
then the 20 times 20 millimeters extruded aluminum bars along which the axes of the Mingda are moved. The ball bearing plastic rollers can be adjusted via eccentric nuts to minimize backlash, a common system in hobby 3D printers that works well and I really like it. The entire construction of the Mingda is extremely rigid, so the printer does not have to be readjusted every time you have carried the device to a different location. While recording the video sequences I often moved the printer around even during operation which had no noticeable effect on the results. The kit printer must be placed on a really flat surface, the frame bends easily as can be seen here. In the 4 years that lie between the production of the two devices, Bowden extruders were popular, but currently the trend is going back to the good old direct extruder that the kit printer came with. I am a big fan of the direct extruder, as it can also print flexible materials and it eats even the cheapest filament that comes with not so constant diameters. The Mingda D2 does not follow the trend towards more and more compact printheads, which I also like, as the components are more easily accessible whenever an error occurred during operation. A clock nozzle or stuck filament is easier to clear with the parts being more easy accessible. I also like that the airflow for part cooling has a fairly large cross section and the fan isn't attached tightly to the nozzle. The fan of the power supply is temperature controlled but can be clearly heard when being fully on. With the new stepper drivers on the mainboard of the Mingda, the drives of the axis work very quietly. Thanks to the magnetically adhering build plate on the print bed, there is no risk of damaging the plastic coating when removing the prints. While the microSD card has to be inserted on the mainboard at the back of the device with the kit printer... ...the standard SD card slot on the Mingda can be easily reached on the front side. The color touchscreen of the D2 with a diagonal of 8.9cm reacts very well to all inputs and the printer menu is clearly structured which makes the device very easy to operate. Four years ago, four line LCDs with buttons or rotary switches were state of the art at desktop 3D printing, which also works well but sometimes takes a little more time to reach the goal. The number of adjustable parameters has also changed from as much as possible... ...towards less is more. If the machine parameters are set correctly in the firmware, they no longer have to be changed during operation which makes the user interface more beginner friendly. 3D printing is getting further and further out of the maker spaces, so that ease of use is rated higher than the possibility of exploring and improving printing as such. While speaking of research and development, many manufacturers including Mingda seem to have problems with publishing the source code of the firmware including the changes made for their devices timely for all printer models. The GPL license of the Marlin firmware on which the firmware of the Mingda D2 is based requires to do so. Before buying a printer you should make sure that the firmware is not only offered for download as binary file. The version published on the pages of Mingda is for the D3 Pro, however this printer model uses the same mainboard as the D2 so that only the dimensions of the print bed have to be changed. The print quality has steadily improved over the years. While the kit printer still delivers usable results, it is clear to see that stringing was a bigger issue years ago. Current printers perform much better. Anyone who prints with PLA shouldn't run into big trouble with oozing, as the Minga demonstrates here. 
When removing the strings, the bumper made with the kit printer broke at the long holes, the wall thickness is only 2mm. The printhead of the Mingda works much more precisely, resulting in prints that are more sturdy so that there is no risk of breaking the part when screwing the component to the chassis of the robot. Due to the more rigid frame and the more precisely working printhead, the D2 can print with significantly higher speed. While with the kit printer with a 0.4mm nozzle and 0.2mm layer thickness, 30mm per second represent the maximum for exterior walls in order to achieve useful results. With the Mingda, this can be done easily with 60mm per second, as can be seen here. The PLA exits the nozzle with constant rate and there is no skipping of the extruder motor, the 2mm thin walls are printed nicely. When setting the same speed as with the kit printer, the results of the Mingda are significantly better, 4 years of research and development between the devices make a difference. If you simply need components for your own construction that somehow work, you still can achieve useful results with the old kit printer, I still like those devices. However, as already mentioned, you can reach your goal faster with the D2, thanks to the improved ease of use. With additional effort, the kit printer can be upgraded with a filament sensor and a function that continues printing after a power failure, however both features are standard on the Mingda. Especially the filament sensor will save one or the other print job. As already mentioned, direct extruders are much better suited to process different filaments. Here I'm printing the tire for a robot vehicle, which is made of thermoplastic polyurethane, a rubber-like, very soft filament. This also works fine, the printed tire fits perfectly on the rim. That's all about my first impression of the Mingda D2 and my review of 4 years of 3D printing. Photos in high resolution which show the Mingda D2 and the printing results can be seen on my website, have a click. While recording this video, I printed the parts for a new type of rover which I will introduce in the next video. And there is still space for improvement of 3D printing as I have demonstrated in a previous video showing a converted kit printer that works without filament, more on this is coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.